Imagine a killer so meticulous he keeps a detailed blueprint with chilling notes about his kills hidden on his laptop, but his biggest mistake? Believing no one will ever find it. Police say the alleged Long Island serial killer used this blueprint to plan out his murders and brainstorm issues he might face while covering his tracks. This isn't just any document, it's divided into four creepy sections. Problems, supplies, TRG for potential targets, and D for dump sites. And now, police are adding two more to Rex Hewerman's alleged body count. I'm Chris, let's recap. Rex Hewerman is casually strolling down a Manhattan sidewalk, totally unaware of what's about to happen. Then, out of nowhere, plainclothes cops swoop in. They surround him and take him into custody just steps away from his Fifth Avenue office. He looks just like another businessman on his way home from work. But this married father of two is the accused Long Island serial killer. Between 1992 and 2011, almost a dozen bodies were discovered up and down Long Island. Then, in 2023, DNA from a half-eaten pizza crust and a series of phone calls led cops to charge Rex with the brutal murders of Megan Waterman, Melissa Bartholomew, Amber Costello, and Maureen Brainerd Barnes. They're known as the Gilgo Four because their remains were all dumped on Long Island's Gilgo Beach. Fast forward to June 2024, and there are two more victims on the architect's alleged kill list. Sandra Castilla, murdered in 1993, and Jessica Taylor in 2003. And the plot thickens. Police say they found a secret document with detailed notes about how Rex allegedly hunted his victims down and avoided being caught all these years. Here's how they found it. After his arrest in 2023, investigators search his ramshackle Long Island house where he lives with his wife, Asa Ellerup, and two adult kids. In his basement, they find a treasure trove, hundreds of electronics, burner phones, cameras, hard drives, USB devices, you name it. Buried in a deleted file on one of his laptops is a Word document titled HK2002-04. In one section are four columns labeled Problems, Supplies, DS, and TRG. Underneath each heading is a chilling list of bullet points and notes. Problems include DNA, blood stains, foot and shoe prints. In the supplies list are things like foam drain cleaner, body wash wipes, and large electrical clips. I don't even want to know what those could have been used for. In the TRG column, one bullet point stands out. It reads, small is good. All six victims were small petite women. Another entry reads T-1 Megan with a question mark. Megan Waterman was 22, living in Scarborough, Maine, when she went missing in Long Island on June 6, 2010. She was last seen leaving her hotel to meet up with a client around 1.30 a.m. Her phone traveled to Massapequa Park and pinged for the last time at 3.11 a.m., allegedly near Rex's house. Months later, in December 2010, her body was found in Gilgo Beach near the other girls. 28-year-old Sandra is the earliest known victim. Originally from Trinidad and Tobago, in the fall of 1993, she was living in Queens. Not long after she was last seen, a couple of hunters found her body in a wooded part of Southampton, Long Island. She was posed with her arms above her head and her legs spread. Her shirt was pushed up and she had 25 wounds on her face, chest, genitals, and thigh. But it's how she died that will really shock you. It all goes back to the eerie planning document found on Rex's hard drive. Under the heading, Things to Remember, is a reminder to use heavier rope because last time a lighter rope broke under the stress of being tightened. Sandra and the Gilgo Four were all strangled to death. Now, if that's not enough to keep you up at night, there's more. How about this for a horrific bullet point? Hit harder next time. Consider a hit to the face or neck for a takedown. And how about these other entries? Get sleep before hunt. Too tired creates problems. And worst of all, more sleep and noise control equals more playtime. Playtime is the stuff of nightmares. The terrible things they suffered through before death 
finally set them free. Until now, Sandra was an unsolved cold case. They didn't think she was a victim of the Gilgo 4 killer, but when they found her, she had unidentified female and male hairs on her remains. Now, police say they're a match to Rex Hewerman and a woman who was living with him at the time. That woman could be his first wife, Elizabeth. They were married in 1990 and split up in 1993. To be clear, she isn't charged with anything. In 1996, three years after their divorce, Rex married Asa Ellerup and moved her and her son into his Massapequa Park house. They later had a daughter together. As of 2024, Asa and the two adult kids are still living in his house, except it's actually her house now. After his arrest, she filed for divorce and Rex signed it over to her. Investigators suspect Sandra and other victims may have spent their last moments there. The planning document they found supports that theory. Remember, sound travels, it reads. Control the amount of air in and out to control the noise made. Use push pins to hang drop cloths from the ceiling, not tape. Are you ready for this? There's a list called body prep, with reminders to wash the body inside and all cavities, remove ID marks and tattoos, and cut off head and hands and marks from torture. That's pretty significant considering how Jessica Taylor and Valerie Mack were found. Jessica was 20 when she disappeared on July 21st, 2003. She was last seen in New York City on July 19th. She was reported missing when she didn't show up for her mother's birthday in upstate New York. On July 26th, a dog walker found her lying on her back with her legs bent underneath her. Her head and part of her arms were cut off. Her killer also tried to remove the tattoo on her chest. And that's not the only similarity to the planning document. Jessica was found in Manorville in some woods near Mill Road. Now, are you ready for this? Mill Road is listed in the dump site column. Hours before Jessica's remains were found, someone saw a dark-colored Chevy truck idling near the spot where her remains were found. At the time, Rex owned a dark green Chevy truck. He started shopping for a new lighter-colored truck in the days after she was found, according to the New York Post. In March 2011, the rest of Jessica, her skull, hands, and forearms, turned up less than a mile from the bodies of the Gilgo Four. But cops had one clue to go on. A hair was found on the surgical drape under her body. It's allegedly a match to Rex. When Jessica was killed, his family was vacationing out of state. Police say this is the same pattern when it comes to the other victims. When the family is away, the serial killer will play. For years, it seemed like the cops were never going to crack the case. Then, a massive regime change in the Suffolk County Law and Crime Departments got it moving forward again. But how did they zero in on Rex? In 2022, a special task force into the Long Island serial killer came together. Basically, sharing resources helped them tie together several different clues. There were witness descriptions of a hulking 6'4", 250-pound man. Witnesses also described a memorable Chevy Avalanche truck. Then, they pinpointed phone calls he allegedly made to the victims and their families. Officers dug through the garbage to get Rex's DNA from a pizza crust he threw away after lunch in the city. The DNA is allegedly a match to hairs found on some of the victims. Of course, DNA is a strong piece of evidence, but the task force wanted this case ironclad, so for more than a year, they secretly watched him. As investigators dug into Rex's life, they quickly found out he was still up to his old tricks. An email account in the name Thomas Hawk was used for thousands of searches related to sex workers, sadistic torture-related pornography, and child pornography, according to court documents. Search phrases included 10-year-old schoolgirl, girl hogtied torture porn, and pretty girl with bruised face porn. And if that's not disturbing enough, here's something even more chilling. Rex was allegedly trying to find the victim's family members. Police say he checked out hundreds of images of the victims online, trying to find out where their children and sisters live. He was also allegedly keeping tabs on the task force, even as they were keeping tabs on him. Between March 2022 and June 2023, police say Rex searched for information on the Gilgo Beach murder investigation more than 200 times. 
Which brings us back to the planning document. One twisted checklist called post event lists reminders to have a story set, burn gloves, dispose of pictures, and change tires. A pre prep checklist includes reminders to inspect the vehicle, do recon on the dump site and street cameras, and check the weather. Rex also allegedly kept a well worn copy of The Cases That Haunt Us by retired FBI agent John Douglas. You might know that name from the Netflix series Mindhunter. Incidentally, Rex also also had a copy of the Mindhunter book the series was based on. It's all about the notorious psychopaths Agent Douglas profile. He was allegedly using it to improve his methods and avoid getting caught, according to the DA. He also allegedly flagged pages in the book about sexual substitution torture, and Stockholm Syndrome. The 60-year-old former architect is pleading not guilty to all charges, and it sounds like these six victims are just the beginning. What do you think about the planning document they found? Do you think there are more victims still out there waiting to be discovered? Let's talk about it in the comments below, and if you like getting all the crime in half the time, please give this a like and remember to subscribe so you never miss a recap. Amy and I are here three times a week. See you soon.